helpful. I, I'm sitting here, this isn't common knowledge among pharmacists and physicians. I'm sitting here wondering if you get hammered by your peers. I mean, do other pharmacists, do other physicians look at you guys with raised eyebrow and say, here comes, here comes that Cohen, you know, across <laughs> the street, Susie's coming. Or, or are you well accepted? I know where your hearts are because I know both of you, but how are you looked at at medical meetings? I feel fine. I'm, nobody says anything to me. I think the biggest question mark is what is gluten? Um, or what is casein? There isn't a strong understanding of that because nutrition isn't um, taught in pharmacy school to mm. any great degree. So, so that question is raised, well, what is that? But they're intrigued by what I have to say. They learn from me. And we learn from one another. Uh, indeed. Uh, Greg, do you know people start quacking when you walk by? I mean, <laughs> uh, I choose my peers now. I choose to hang around with uh, like-minded people. Uh, I don't tend to get invited to the to the conferences I used to get invited to speak at. But I choose people who have a, who have a similar uh, paradigm of health, uh, like you guys. I, I think that's so sad that you are on the cutting edge. You may not be doing exactly what you learned in your medical training, but you found a different way to help people get better. I really enjoyed sitting here and chatting with you two. Thank you so much for honoring our audience and coming on here and continuing their education. Don't go away, my friends. We'll be right back with more of Know the Cause. I take this anti-fun. I was all of 24, 25 years old. I was a nutritionist working in one of the big medical clinics in Los Angeles. I'll never forget the first time a woman patient came in and sat down with me and she was dripping off her chin and her nose. And she said, Doug, I've ha I'm having hot flashes. What do I do about this? Totally unaware, totally unqualified. I'm a guy. Joining us today is Susie Cohen, who isn't a guy who can talk to us about hormone replacement therapy. And then Dr. Greg Emerson out of Brisbane, Australia who is probably the most knowledgeable person maybe in the world on hormone replacement, natural and sometimes real hormone replacement therapy. Welcome to both of you. It's an honor indeed to have you two like-minded people, pharmacist and physician, to talk about issues like these. Susie, I'm going to start with you. I found through that woman, you know, 40 years ago or so, that women we Americans, we humans are all thumbprints. So Dong Kwai may have worked for one, Damiana Root for another one, but there was never a cream, you know, wild Mexican yam that I could recommend that worked universally for women going through midlife changes. Right, what, that's same true. Same with you? Yes, that's true. You know, that's the whole one-size-fits-all principle that works in the pharmacy. You know, we have these um, estrogen-like compounds or drugs, and they come in a couple of different doses. But every woman is different, and her hormones need to be tailored to her, to her system, and to the way that she is metabolizing the estrogen, particularly the metabolites, which very few doctors actually measure. Um, one of the things, though, that women can do that are, that are viewing this and wondering what can I do to balance my hormones better is they can pick up a supplement called DIM, D-I-M. It's um, known as a broccoli extract, and this helps the body calm down some estrogen, and it helps um, protect the ratios, and it will reduce the risk for cancer in women. Is um, this a supplement that it is. Uh, is on the market, D-I-M? D-I-M. It's also related to I3C, and I, they're known by their initials. Okay. And these things help with PMS, hot flashes. They help with uh, pretty much every hormonal imbalance. One more thing, buy fresh rosemary can get it at the supermarket and cook with it because the rosemary extract is also known to help with estrogen metabolism and there are some studies that suggest that it may be helpful in preventing breast or prostate cancer. Wow. Susie writes a column. She's a syndicated columnist in addition to being America's most trusted pharmacist and I see that from time to time in your columns. You're really giving people good advice. Dr. Emerson, you had an interesting story about the Chinese really originated hormone replacement therapy. Tell us about that. Yeah, the Chinese started hormone restoration, if you like, 3,000 years ago. And what they would do is they would collect the urine of the elderly Chinese woman in society and then dehydrate the urine and take the crystals which contained the hormones from the elderly, from, sorry, from the young, the young Chinese woman. They would okay. take the hormones and the urine from the young Chinese woman, 
dehydrate it, take the crystals and give it to the elderly Chinese women who were having uh, menopausal symptoms. So they were really the originators of uh, hormone restoration for the last 3,000 3, years. Hormone replacement therapy. Today we think commonly Premarin, pregnant mare urine, so that makes sense. Was there a period of time in your practice when you'd write prescriptions for Premarin and Prempro and things like that? No, I've never prescribed um, hormones from uh, horses. Okay, so in lieu of that, the women watching this show right now, 47, 48, 50 years old, going through the change of life, what would you recommend? I think everything has to start with the diet. I think you have to get the diet right because as we know, if the diet's wrong, then you'll get yeast build up and yeast secretes my mycotoxins, which change your hormonal balance. Parasites in the body, heavy metals, all cause hormonal disruption. Environmental toxins, all of which have a, a hormonal disrupting effect. So you take care of that stuff first. If it hasn't worked, then you can look at herbs because they can have a powerful effect. Foods like maca and deer velvet that we talked about. If all those other things have failed, then you can try individualized hormone replacement by checking the level of a woman's hormones or a man's hormones, finding which ones are low, and then using natural bioidentical hormones to bring it up to a level that it controls their symptoms. Are blood tests available for women to see where their hormone levels are? Saliva tests? Mm -hmm. Yes, which, which works tests, best for hormones? Well, you may want to speak to this, um, but uh, what I have found is that checking the urine for the metabolites is very helpful because you can see the ratios of the two estrogens and the 16 estrogens and the four, two, four, and 16. Um, we can flash that on the screen and spell that out. But when you're looking at 2-methoxyestradiol, for example, and you're comparing that to the four and 16, these ratios matter. People are hearing numbers and they're confused. What I'm saying basically is that if they have their urine checked, they can look at the metabolites because the ratio of the estrogen metabolites will dictate their risk for cancer in a man and a woman. Mm. And that's far more important to me than a moment in time checking a blood level, which changes every minute. Indeed. I agree. And women mostly, we talk about on the air, you know, women go through PMS and men don't necessarily, maybe male menopause, et cetera. Is checking men's hormone levels also important, Dr. Emerson? Absolutely. And I agree completely with Susie that, that, that you can't compete with a 24-hour urine because of the 24-hour urine you get all the hormones and all the hormone metabolites which you can't get on a saliva or a blood test. And yes, I think checking testosterone and DHEA levels in men, yeah. the evidence now that the, the lower the men's testosterone, the lower their DHEA levels, the higher the risk of dying of just about anything. Mm -hmm. but, and the saliva test, I don't want to discount that. I actually like the saliva test. I think they're a, an okay place to start. I think it's a great, easy way for consumers to um, buy a kit. You don't need a prescription for it, and it's a good place to start, and it will show levels of certain hormones like DHEA and cortisol and estrogen and progesterone. This is a great place to start. And to take it one step further, go for the urine. Yeah, these study. kits are available, or talk to your doctor. Thank you both for coming in and sharing this time with us. Don't go away, my friends. I'll be right back with more of Know the Call.